certainly was very concerned about the way Scotland would play. He's had to prepare various different sets of tactics for the game. So a strong wind blowing against Scotland at the moment. Rather blustery out there, but the rain has gone off for the moment, although I have the suspicion it's not far away. The Belgians continue to press forward on the left. Strachan back fighting. Cook is robbed by Archibald. Now Sunis. Jim Ben has taken up a position in the left midfield. Roy Aiken is remaining in the heart of the defence. Alongside Hansen and McLeish. So already I think Ian, the Scottish tactics becoming clear. Yes they are. At, uh, Roy Aiken has got the job as sweeper. Alan Hansen will obviously be a marker. It looks as if he might pick up uh, Van der Els. Now, Alan's not that type of player. He doesn't play that system with Liverpool. And I always find it a little bit dangerous when Scotland use tactics like this because our players are not used to man for man marking. So the break in the right by Archibald, followed by Darden. Number three. Support inside from Sunis. The Scots retaining possession well. Doug Beach wearing an unfamiliar number 11. He's still going forward, and the flag has gone up on the far side. Doug Beach was upset. It was not Doug Beach who was offside. I think it was Steve Archibald. So the Belgian free kick. Jean-Marie Pfaff, the goalkeeper from Bayern Munich, just recovered from a broken nose. Van der Smissen on the right. Cook, number 10, will be a key man in the centre of midfield for the Belgians. And just found its way to Gerets from Nius. Gerets coming forward, the crowd love this. It's back to land. It's penalised. Soft whistle blown by referee Antonio Garrido. And I think Jim Bent was perhaps a shade unlucky. You can see from that picture of Gerrit, the wind blowing fiercely behind the Belgians. And they have one or two experts from free kick that surely though is too far out as Cook lines it up. Wide it goes to Bakker. Verkautern. Hansen's there for Scotland. Cook again, the man wanting possession in the middle of the field. Back here trying to play it back, and Neri steps in. Now Doug Leash. Strachan. Scotland persisting in a short passing game when they have possession, making sure they find their men. As soon as switching the pattern, this is Archibald. Crowded round them are several Belgian defenders. Vandenberg. Robbed by Frank Gray. Now Hansen for Scotland. So McLeish, Aiken and Hansen appear to be sharing the central defensive duties. Derry pushing wide on the right and Frank Gray being given some freedom to push forward on the left. This is Aiken. Coming forward again to telling effect for Scotland. This is Strachan. Very composed opening by Scotland. Pass from Sunis. This is Strachan. Sunis has gone forward. He has Archibald ahead of him. He's onside. Doug Leash waiting in the middle. Bent is arriving also. That's for Bent. The clearance by Gerrits. But a promising move by Scotland. They put some passes together coming forward. Now they may be exposed. Here's Van der Elst. In this pace. And well tackled by Neri. Leighton doing well to keep the ball in play. Van der Elst scored twice against Scotland at Hamden in the last European Championship and scored once here in the Heisel Stadium. So rather a psychological choice for the Belgian manager Guy Thijs, who 
did not to Van der Elst on the side for the last match against Switzerland. Header from Dalglish. Neri under pressure. But it's Scotland strong. Well, not a bad composed start for Scotland here. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with this start. Uh, the good players on the team, by, uh, by that I mean the composed players, the football players like Sunnis, uh, Dalglish and Strachan, they're getting a hold of the ball and uh, they look as if they're uh, quite happy with the way that they've started again. And uh, I think what we've got to do, obviously, is, is keep a hold of the ball when we've got it so that we don't give it away and don't get caught with this counter-attack that I think the Belgians like to use. Strachan takes Scotland throw to Neri. Now McLeish. Aiken, the Belgian defence came out. Neri beat the offside trap and forced Faf into conceding the throw. Intelligent play by both Roy Aiken and David Neri. And Faf is the only Belgian player playing the Bundesliga for the moment by a Munich goalkeeper. Archibald back to Strachan. Now Neri. Five is Hansen. And again, the Belgians playing offside. Well, they could suffer for that, Ian. Well, yeah, they're, they're coming out to attack the ball when Scotland uh, play a square ball or play a ball back. They're coming out quickly to try and catch him. And then, of course, if they win it, then they can, they can break away from it. Well, that tells you what the surface is like. Easy on top. And then else with Frank Gray. Is given, and I think it's given to Scotland. Well, Francois van der Elst is protesting to the referee, but the decision is a foul on Frank Gray by van der Elst, and that is a welcome decision for the Scottish defence. Sunnis. Archibald. Sunnis getting a lucky break there to find Bet. Now Strachan has switched to the left. He's got Bray on the outside. Archibald at the far side of the box. Bet is also in the box. This is Dalgleish. Now Strachan, he's offside, I think. Yes, the referee acknowledges the linesman's flag on the far side. Interesting to see Gordon Strachan switching from the right flank to the left. And that, I'm sure, also is designed to confuse any Belgian tactics, which might have been prepared for Gordon Strachan, who certainly is very highly regarded among the Belgians. Off the head of Frank Gray, that's Belgium's throw. The crowd rather muted for the moment. This Belgian crowd spoiled by a run of 16 victories in a row in the Heisel Stadium for the country. 27, the last defeat against Italy in a friendly by one goal to nil, and since then, 16 games in a row. Remarkable record. And the long range effort from Perkouten on the left. Happily over the top for Jim Layton, but Perkouten is a menace coming in off the left flank. Yeah, Perkouten played very well in the World Cup uh, for Belgium. Jock is a terrific left foot. He, he plays some lovely balls in uh, from that side. It's very accurate. And of course, from set pieces as well, he, he can smack them. So if he gets any chances, especially conditions as they are tonight, with a blustery wind behind him and a wet ground, he can get them on target. A lot of problem there for Jim Layton. So the pass back from Aiken to Leighton. Hansen wants it short. And Scotland playing the build up. Slowly from the back through Sunnis. Aiken, a run from Strachan. There's Dalgleish coming across to make that into a good pass. Now it's Neri. Strachan a bit casual with the ball intended for Sunnis. And Strachan getting back a long way to Rob Backer. Hansen trying to find Doug Leach on the right touchline. Mears. The Belgians come forward again, switching tactics with a long ball to the right to Van der Elst. Supported by Van der Smissen. Cook. Darden. Darden is wearing number three, but likes to come forward in the midfield where he plays for his club standard Liège. Douglas waiting for support from midfield. Bet on the left touch line. This is Frank Gray. Bet is still available on the outside. 
Ray attacking the Belgian defense and the short ball inside for Dalglish is cut off by Cook. Well, that throw carried in the wind beyond for Cowton for Scotland's throw. Strachan. Cut off by Darden. And the rest. Good tackle by Sunis. Strachan is offside. Well, the Belgian defence again pushing out very rapidly indeed in a line, and it may well be that Scotland can capitalise on that before the end. So intelligence up front, I think, with Delglish and Strachan, particularly having the guile to break that down. Delglish, Frank Gray. As soon as available inside. Now Neri. Sunis trying to command the midfield. Archibald making a good run. Going past Mius. Good cross by Archibald and it's turned behind by Manders Missing happily for the corner kick. Happily from the point of view of Belgium, but Scotland now have the chance to apply some pressure. Well, I wonder if they'll take the chance to bring any the tall defenders forward. Hansen certainly staying back, so is Roy Aiken. But McLeish has joined the attack. Neri hovering outside the box as Douglas plays it to the near post. Archibald appear to be pushed on McLeish rather. McLeish trying to get back and he commits the foul. But that was born of frustration, I think, about the fact he was not given the foul when he was pushed at the near post. Well, he was definitely pushed, Jock. <laughs> you know, it's a pity we're not going to see that one again. He definitely got pushed in the back there when Douglas played that near post corner. Cook for Belgium. Banders missing. Cook again, and the left midfield player, Van der Elst, that's behind Gerrits. Gray makes the challenge. Bet showing his strength, holding off Van der Elst to release Delglish. Uh, Delglish is Archibald ahead of him, that's a good pass for Archibald. Back to Delglish, and Scotland take the lead. The marvellous opening. Twelve and a half minutes of the first half gone, and a vintage goal from Kenny Dalglish, his 27th in the Scotland jersey, in his 89th international, and what a start that is for Scotland. There it is again. The pass found Archibald from the Dalglish initially. Archibald very intelligently with that return pass on the left foot, finding Dalglish continuing the run forward, and that's where Dalglish is so deadly. Oh, superb goal. Really superb goal. Kenny as it happens, has started off the game in, in this first sort of 14 minutes of the game, playing very, very well. And he, as you know, he's been playing terrific for Liverpool of late. That was a beautiful, inch-perfect pass uh, to Archibald, who, to be fair to him, did terrific then by squaring it and letting Kenny run through only goalkeeper to beat. That was a well-executed goal, tremendous goal. Yes, yeah, certainly a goal to remember for Scotland. And that will no doubt give the Belgians a great deal to think about. The one with comparative ease in the last two occasions the sides met. But clearly the Scots have stated their case early in the match. They've never looked in trouble at the back either, and with that great piece of imaginative forward play, the leash and Archibald linking to telling effect, and it was great play from Archibald, much criticised at home and among a lot of the Scottish supporters, but that was a pass of great quality. Well, he's, he's been having uh, a bit of an up and down season with Tottenham. Uh, he's, he's had injuries, of course, but he's not been showing the, the same flair that he had a year or so ago. But uh, certainly tonight, he's looking on song. Scotland growing in confidence. Here, a lot of the loose balls now in midfield. That was soon as battling for his country, and the throw is given to Belgium. Soon as protesting as he goes back. Thinks he was fouled, I think. This is Kuhlemans. We've seen very little of Kuhlemans so far in the match. Very experienced player, and it's 36th international for Belgium. Tackle from Dalglish was enough to deny Van der Smissen, and now Bet. Archibald off the run on the left again. Bet prefers to play it back to Gray. That's for Archibald. He's offside. The flag was up immediately. The ball was played by Gray. Walter Mius was the marker, but Archibald has had a fine start to the match for Scotland. Darden. 
Vaca leaving it to Farkautern. Cook is number 10. You may be able to hear some of the Scottish supporters celebrating now. There aren't very many Scots in the stadium tonight. But they've certainly enjoyed the opening 15 minutes. Now bet. Just his second international. Played against Holland in his debut earlier in the year. Now Roy Aiken. Hansen. There certainly doesn't appear to be a great deal of urgency about the Belgians, Ian. No, no, I think if I was a Belgian fan, I'd be a little bit annoyed at the moment because they're just standing back and allowing Scotland to dictate the game. So now he's playing it forward for Archibald, and he might have had hopes that the wind would hold that up, but the ball sped through for a goal kick to Belgium. Now a very composed start to the match for Scotland. They have settled in the ball. They've made their passes accurately, and safely and of course they produced that one great spark of inspiration which has given them the lead leash with a throw back to Leighton the wind now appears to be swirling a little not quite so directly against Scotland no one waiting on the right flank for Leighton's kick out so Jos Darden Throwing the ball forward to Baca. Cook. Forced to go back to Mius. Very experienced central defender. 31 years old. Also plays for Standard Liège, as do three of the back four players for Belgium. Now for Carlton. Lofting it in. <laughs> Van der Berg going for the great by Leighton. Chance of the rebound. But Jim Leighton undoubtedly the hero of the hour for Scotland. Well, we'll see the quality of the cross coming in here. Ian, this flighty ball from Percounter swerving away. Leighton committed himself, showed great determination and a break there for Scotland, undoubtedly. The shot from Kullermans and eventually scrambled clear. Well, I did say before about uh, Percounter's left foot. I mean, the, the ball play then was superb and Scotland have got to guard against that. Corner kick taken to Cook. Kerlemans going for it, bet challenging. That should be Scotland's throw, I think. Yes, the linesman's decision is clear. And it's accepted by referee Garrido. So Frank Gray, no hurry out of your picture to take this throw as Bet takes up position ahead. So as soon as here's Dalglish inviting the tackle from Darden. The ball was out, that should be Scotland's throw. Bit of frustration creeping in there between Van der Smissen and Darden, numbers eight and number three for Belgium. As soon as leaving the throw to Frank Gray. Doug Leach playing it in towards soon as it comes awkwardly off Cook to bet. That's for Archibald to chase if he can get in behind Darden, the long leg of the Belgian defender. Intercepts and he's fouled from behind by Steve Archibald. An apology from Archibald, a word of warning from referee Garrido. The match is already underway. Darden limping back into the action. Van der Smissen plays it wide to the left to Farkautern. Van der Smissen again. Well, the Belgian passing certainly hasn't been as accurate as we might have expected. But they had the chance to build again. Darden striding forward. Bet in the way. Now Cook. Towards Kullermans. Back towards Darden. Dre picks it up for Bet. And goes in support. Archibald again making a run up front. Taglish is also there. Mears should be in command there. And it's out for the throw to Scotland. Douglas also has had his critics in a Scotland jersey, but he certainly has played very well so far tonight. Complimented the midfield and defence. There's Strachan. Now Sunis. Back to Archibald. Now Strachan. The whistle had already gone, I think. I wonder if referee Garrido will bring that back. 
striking after a very involved opening five minutes has been very well marked since then. The Belgians trying to play everything through Cook number 10. Now Kurlimans. Letting it run. And the break of the ball. I don't know if that was handball. This is Van der Elst. Checking inside Gray. Danger here for Scotland. Kurlimans wants support from Cook. Great tackle from Strachan. Surely Strachan was fouled. Gerrits, the offender. And that was us seeing another side of Gordon Strachan's talent. See, and coming back there to make a very important tackle. Well, I must say about the Scottish uh, players as a whole, you know, they're all doing very well in going to the ball defensively. You know, whenever a ball has gone loose at all, we've got a blue jersey going quickly to the ball. All the lads are working really well. So Scotland's free kick. Roy Aiken to take it. Doug Leach had made a run off his marker, Jos Darden, and the ball went over the top. Doug Leach tackling, the break of the ball falling for Darden. Now Vandenberg. Anders Missen leaves it to Gerritz. Mius inside. Tavlish snapping at his heels. Now Cook looking for Verkauten. Neri in good position. Strachan immediately finding space on the right. Through ball for Vandenberg and Leighton quickly off his line. So Vandenberg, the winner of the European Golden Boot two seasons ago when he scored 39 League and Cup goals for his club Anderlecht. Denied on that occasion. Good layoff from Archibald once more. Strachan under pressure. Cook playing it in field. Now Gerrits. Gets a special cheer of his own from the Belgian supporters. Running into that crowd of Scottish players. Soon as making the pass forward to Dalgleish, holding off Van der Smissen. Strachan to Archibald. Neri, Sunis. Dalgleish to Strachan. Kurlemans. Verkauten, switching back to the left. Scotland funneling back in numbers, leaving only Dalgleish and Archibald up. Every other Scottish player facing the ball as Cook tries to probe for an opening. And again, Scotland equal to that. Aiken showing his strength coming forward. Now Strachan, Bet on his left. Gray immediately arriving in support on the left touch line. Dalgleish wants it inside. Bet leaves it to Strachan. Gray now to Hansen. Here's Archibald, trying to turn past Muse, and Muse showing his studs, is penalised. Well, that certainly wouldn't have been a foul, I don't think, in Great Britain, but to Scotland's advantage, that's a free kick. And a chance again for Scotland to push men forward. This time, though, they're leaving all the central defenders back. McLeish, Aiken and Hansen have stayed back. That one-goal lead will be protected doggedly, I've no doubt. Well, Scotland are in command, uh, Jock, and uh, the fact that they've got this goal up now, they don't have to try and win the game. All they need to do now is, is uh, hold it, and, and of course, that, that would suit them. And, uh, and against a team like Belgium, it's the best way to play because they themselves, as I said before, are a counter-attacking team. Now, with Scotland not having to go and, and get this goal, they can sit and keep possession like they did before there. They, have, they had about 10 passes, knocking the ball around, and that will entice the, the Belgians in, and then we'll maybe get a crafty little pass going forward to, to get the lads in for a goal. He is playing it short. Devander's missing. Cook. Verkauten, this is where his pace could be so dangerous for Scotland. Van der Elst is there, there's Van den Berg. And that's the equaliser. 25 minutes and the first half gone. Van den Berg justifies his manager's confidence with the equaliser, but it was all down to Frank Verkauten on the left. Scotland had to beware of these breaks on the left of Verkauten. Leighton went into the, ch to the challenge there with Van der Elst. It broke back to Vandenberg. It was unlucky perhaps for Leighton, and Vandenberg made no mistake. Well, we've got to do something about Verkauten. You know, 
just said before how Scotland were in command. Now, of course, it's, it's back to square one. But this boy has got such a lovely left foot. That every time he knocks the ball in that box, he's so accurate. That was a superb ball. Leighton did very well as it happened to come out and challenge for it. But the Belgians got the break. It dropped lovely for Vandenberg, and that's it. 1-1. One, one. So one apiece. 20 minutes of the first half left. And you can hear now the Belgian crowd getting behind their team. Garrett's going down. They seem to make a meal of that. As Beck made a challenge. The referee has reacted by giving the free kick to Belgium. And I wonder just what effect that goal may have on the Belgian morale because they certainly appear to be struggling until that point and Scotland seem to be doing everything right. This may be a hectic period for the Scottish defence. Poor free kick by Gerrit. As soon as keeping calm at the edge of the box to play it back to Leighton. That was just about the first time in the match the Belgians have hit the dead ball line and the result was devastating. So Gray playing it back and Scotter will have to be very diligent indeed. Their concentration must not lapse as the first half wears on and Dalglish's early goal in the 13th minute is equalised by Vandenberg. Gerets for Belgium. Mios. Hansen attacking the ball, getting in in front of Cook. Bet to Sunis. Strachan. There he's on his outside. Sunis being invited to take command again in midfield. Strachan made some space to accept the return pass. Now Archibald to Sunis. Neri. Strachan again. Well, a lot of confidence here among the Scots. Good tackle eventually by Fakautam. Now Van der Els breaks for Belgium. Hansen sticking out his left foot. Yes. Van der missing. Cook hanging back to take the pass in midfield. There he has to take this. Well, appeared to be a bit uncertain. <laughs> and the flag was up for offside in the event against Burkhouten. But a bit of uncertainty there between Derry and Leighton, which almost cost Scotland. Well, David, David Neri has been caught a couple of times, you know, with balls played inside him. Uh, is it because that the lad's not used to playing, you know, in the right-back position? But that was a, I mean, for any defender getting caught with a ball played inside you like that is really criminal. And that's the second time it's happened. It happened for the goal as well. Beautifully controlled layoff by Dalglish. Bet to Sunis. That's for Neri. The wind is now becoming very treacherous indeed. Swirling around the stadium. Making long passes very difficult indeed. McLeish with that firm challenge concedes the throw to Belgium. Vandenberg. Kurlimans. Back it. Get it. Well, that's the Belgians start to string passes together. Leighton watching that carefully. That's not easy in these conditions. He took it well. Get it. Cross. Archibald with Baker. Cook. Leach's tackle, the judge done fair by the referee. Leach wanting to have a discussion there, I think, with Fakarton. And I wonder what language they used. Kurlimans, hanging back from his striking partners, Van der Elst and Vandenberg. Now Kurlimans coming from a midfield position through the middle to support them and provide 
little bit of help for Cook in midfield. Jaretz is over there, inside left position. Kerlemans to Vandenberg. Back to Verkouten, he wants to attack Neri. Aikens headed out. Well, was Aiken who closed them down, and the chance for Kerlemans goes a begging. Well, suddenly the Scottish defence looks none too happy. Kuhlemans had the chance. Well, Aiken was battling hard. He made two important challenges inside the box here. The one-two attempted Vandenberg appeared to miss out on the chance for Couter now. Going at Neri, playing it in. Aiken headed it out, then made the second challenge. Good play by Aiken. Now, that awkward ball falling for Kuhlemans and the shot went past the post. Archibald is caught offside. Less than quarter of an hour now, the first half left. Belgium one, Scotland one. The opening goal by Kenny Dalglish equalized by Vandenberg. Bet challenged immediately by Van der Smissen, but helped by Dalglish. Dalglish tackled by Gerets. Gerets having his 44th cap tonight. Frank Gray is 28th. Bet forced out. It's Belgium's throw. Belgium captain Eric Gerets. Is it short to Cook? Cook made a great impact in the World Cup finals. And that else beaten by Hansen. Vandenberg for Kauten off the run on the left. Anders Missen has it. Now Kuhlemans. Hansen intercepts. Gerrits is free in the right. Some gaps now appearing for Belgium. There's Kuhlemans. Leighton challenging Van der Elst and the flag was up for offside. And Leighton making it plain to for Kauten that he did not relish the challenge after the whistle had gone. But there's a lot more movement now um, among the Belgian players. You know, they're all getting the ball, moving it around, challenging and everything. They're, they're playing with a lot more spirit than they were in the opening 15 minutes. I think now Scotland may be happy to go into the interval all square, regroup for the second half when they certainly will have the elements to help them. Unless, of course, the wind switches direction. Gerrits playing it forward. Van der Els challenged by Hansen. Here's Aiken. Aiken and McLeish, back men, Hansen operating just in front of them. Well, Aiken's had a good match so far for Scotland. And there's Misson going back, the standard of the edge, good field player. Frank Gray's made a good run in the left to take Hansen's pass. Bet supporting. Inside is Dalgleish. Now Sunis. This is how Scotland started, stringing passes together. Nothing too ambitious, making them all tell. Here's Bet. As soon as hanging back in an open position. Hansen, Strachan offering himself short on the right, takes it from Bet. Now McLeish. Well, Scotland happily putting passes together in the Belgian half. Archibald needs some support. Certainly done plenty of running in the match so far for Scotland. Dalglish. Oh, that's a great turn by Dalglish. Chance to one for Scotland. Dalglish in his best. Oh. And that is a goal to remember. Marvellous play by Kenny Dalglish. And if anyone cares to question his ability to Scotland jersey, let him look at that goal again. Absolutely magnificent. Perhaps the only man in the United Kingdom who could have done this. Great play, and look at the finish with the left foot. Well, what a superb goal, John. That was, I mean, Kenny Dalglish has been playing this season with Liverpool as well as he's ever played in his life, I should think. And uh, what a superb goal. But the build-up to it, as I was saying before, how when Scotland were keeping possession and knocking the ball around, that then we could maybe get a nice little crafty pass going in. And it was Graeme Souness who played the ball forward to 
Dalglish, but look at the turn. Out, used outside of his foot, turn the ball, come inside the lunging tackle, and then saw where the goalkeeper was and just bent it around with his left foot. And that is a goal that the best players in the world would be proud of scoring that one. No question about it, and it's very hard seeing class of the highest order like that, not to feel very proud to be a Scotsman in the High Hill Stadium. Strachan tackled by Cook, the referee giving a good advantage, but that breaks down for Cowton used an arm. Scotland get the free kick. Well, that goal from Dalgleish stunning the Belgian crowd. Anticipated that there would be about 45,000 in the stadium, but there are precious few empty seats. And the lot cost £26 for a centre stand seat for tonight's match. I reckon that goal from Kendall Gleish was worth every penny. Scotland again have the free kick. Archibald. Now Strachan. Kellermans. Neri. And Dalgleish offside. Well, what a passage again being strung together by Scotland. I just wonder how many passes there were among Scots players before that goal. Well, I, I'll tell you, we're in double figures because they started to move down the left-hand side of the field and then it was transferred across to the other side. And, you know, this is the idea of, of the game tonight that Scotland want to keep a hold of the ball, as we said at the beginning. And Graham Souness, of course, had been the architect in the middle of the field there, getting it from one side, playing it out the other, playing in little groups, changing the, changing the point of attack. And they did it superbly, and, of course, to finish with a goal at the end of it. It was a, the perfect lesson, wasn't it? Yes, I think that's a goal which may well be shown many, many times in coaching courses. Perhaps Ian St John playing a vital part. Yeah. So Faf electing a long ball downfield. Van der Elst. That's a good pass to Kurlemans and Vandenberg was offside in any event. And that goal from Scotland appears to have stunned not only the Belgian crowd, but the Belgian players. They possibly realise that they have been witnesses to a goal scored by that man, Kenny Dalgleish, which will undoubtedly match anything we'll see this season or any other, perhaps. Cook beaten by Souness. Souness lifting his left foot too high, I'm sure, and that'll be a free kick for Belgium. It's seven and a half minutes of the first half left, and the scoreline quite remarkably. Belgium one, Scotland two. Two goals from Kenny Dalgleish, one from Erwin van den Berg for Belgium. One little group of Scots to my right, still singing in celebration. Although there's a long way to go. Van der Smissen with Bet and Dalgleish challenging. Walter Mius. And then Bert took up good position, so did Kuhnemans. Great play from Belgium. Van der Els. And this time it's the Belgians' time to celebrate. Francois Van der Els, the hammer of the Scots, does it again. Well, what a remarkable game this has become. Van der Els scored three times in his last two matches against Scotland. A great build up. Van den Berg, the Kuhnemans, then Van der Els, and that just sneaking in at Leighton's left hand post. Well, I think there's lots of concentration job with Scotland there. You know, that after scoring a the goal, they, I think they themselves are going to sleep a little bit. And look at, the, look at the space he's got there when the ball is played to him. Frankie Gray gets caught and let him on the inside there. And the shot looked to me as if maybe the goalkeeper sort of dived over it a little bit. I mean, it's always difficult from this angle, but uh, it slipped in at the corner, mind you. As I say, it's difficult to blame the goalkeeper on a thing like that, but you can certainly blame the defenders for going to sleep again. So there's a the scoreline, Belgium 2, Scotland 2, and only 40 minutes of the match gone. Quite remarkable. So Gerrits, the Belgian captain, has renewed heart as he comes forward. Jos Darden. Back here. Two for Carlton. Switching the pattern again, testing out Leighton, and the Aberdeen keeper is equal to the task. Dre may have some personal nightmare about that goal. Appear to be ball watching as a pass came forward to Van der Elst. 
Cook in the midfield. Albaca. Curlemans played a vital role in that goal for Belgium. Now Gerrit running into that sea of blue jerseys. Back it goes to Mius. Darden. Yeah, he should win that for Scotland, but he has to concede the throw. Abaka. The Belgian crowd supporting their favourites now. Building up a chant behind the Belgian goal. Eric McLeish back to central defensive position alongside Roy Aiken. But it's Belgium's free kick. And with Verkouten's ability to bend these in, this could be a moment of danger again for Scotland. Everyone facing the ball except Steve Archibald. Short one to Cook. Sliding it in. McLeish clears it. Now Dalgleish, Sunis. Great pass to Strachan. Archibald, the only man forward. Bet making a long run from a deep position. That's Jim Bet. Fine play from the Rangers midfield player. He was followed all the way, mind you, by Van der Smissen. Strachan carrying on. The ball was out for a throw in. And I think that'll be a Belgian ball. Strachan not at all happy with the Portuguese linesman's decision. But that spot of descent will avail him little. Just three minutes now left in the first half. Belgium two, Scotland two. Goals from Kenny Dalglish for Scotland and from Van den Berg and Van der Elst for Belgium. So McLeish in the challenge with Van den Berg. It's Belgium's throw in. Very crucial stage in the first half. The closing moments. Cook. Looking for the return pass, making a big dive in the box. The referee's not interested, but I think he's entitled not to be interested. That appeared to be a blatant dive by Ludo Cook. Gerrits going past Archibald and Aiken, but brought down by Roy Aiken and the free kick. Now, this could be very dangerous indeed for Scotland. They've got Cook and for Coutter, who are capable of a lot of danger. There's the challenge. Clearly a very clean tackle coming in on Cook. So Garrett's on the deck. Now, this is where Scotland must not lose their concentration. Cook has great power on the left foot. So has for Cowton. These are the two men over the ball. Five-man Scottish wall lines up. Leighton bouncing on his line. Start then plays it straight into the wall, which stood firm. Archibald taking on Cook. Taking the ball for a run. That's all he can be asked to do, I think. And he was impeded by Cook, and Scotland have the free kick. 90 seconds of the first half left. Aiken. Well, running into trouble. Curlemans is Van der Elf breaking, and that was an important interception, but the move is still on for Belgium. Scotland trying to get men back in the box. And McLeish makes the telling interception in front of Van der Elst. Good piece of play by the Aberdeen defender. Attacked the ball and got his reward, although it's a corner kick to Belgium. Inside the last minute of the first half. For Cowton taking it with his left foot, aiming to bend one in on Jim Layton. But there'll be a hold up before the kick is taken, Alan Hansen crouching down there Hugh Allen, the Scottish physiotherapist coming on I didn't see what damage was done to Alan Hansen, it must have been an upward stumble or a fall off the ball I think Ian I didn't see well, anything happen to him I didn't see either, I may of course be just trying to take the heat out of the situation because as you say it's right on half time 
Uh, and the, the crowd were getting excited. It was a good counter-attack, a good break by them. And maybe Alan's using some experience here just to take the heat out of it. Let's hope it works. I mean, also a very good actor, if that's the case, uh, Ian. Back it goes to Cook. The Scottish defence coming to meet him. And Cook finds his fist in his side in frustration. That was a good opportunity. Roy Aiken looking very angry indeed at the space that was given to Ludo Cook. Look at all the room he had here. The Scots trying to close him down and the shot going wide. But then again, looking at that picture there, you will see that Gordon Strachan was on the post and played everybody on side. And there goes now the half-time whistle with the scoreline. Belgium 2, Scotland 2, the Portuguese referee bringing to an end a fascinating first half, punctuated by some marvellous goals. Two of them from Scotland. Kenny Duggan. Ian St John. Quite fiercely. And conditions of anything have worsened, although I'm sure that's the last thing in the Scots players' minds after that. Incredible first half, finishing two goals apiece. Kenny Dalglish over the ball there with Gordon Strachan to start the second half. Dalglish undoubtedly the hero of the first half for Scotland with these two great goals. The referee Antonio Garrido checks his watch and a crucial 45 minutes for European Championship hopes for Scotland is underway. Van der Elst picking that up with Bet. Chasing him, the tackle from Dalglish is penalised by referee Garrido and that seemed to be a little bit unfortunate but... Eric Gerets doesn't look too unhappy about the tackle from Dalglish. Nevertheless, he has the free kick. No changes in the Scottish lineup, and nor in the Belgian team at half time. Well, I'm quite certain that both sides will want to freshen up in the strength sapping surface before the end of the match. Here's Cook. Supported by Bakke, that's a great ball in, won by Aiken. Sunis down to McLeish, Neri, and Sunis dictating play again early on in midfield for Scotland. Here's Archibald. For my money, had a good first half for Scotland, lots of running, held up, play very well indeed, led the line well, and created, of course, the opening goal for Kenny Dalglish. Now Bet, Dalglish. And Bet has carried on into an offside position. Belgians come out in the line. And Jim Bet going back. They also did some very good running in the first half, Ian. Yeah, I thought Jim Bet had a very good 45. Eh? You know, considering that it's only his second game, he's only a young lad. I thought he's, he's pitted in very well. He's used the ball well. He used it very intelligently. He's worked hard to try and win it back when, when Scotland have lost it. And I, I think he's done very, very well. Headed on from Curlimans. Curlimans became a much more important player as that first half wore on. A vital part in the equalising goal for Francois van der Elst. There's Erwin van den Berg, who's been suffering apparently a crisis of confidence. He only scored seven times so far this season for Anderlecht after winning the Golden Boot with 39 two years ago. He scored 24 for Anderlecht last season. But the goals rather have dried up for Anderlecht. But unhappily for Scotland, he's managed one tonight. Now, Mius. Strachan trying to steal the ball, but a little bit more strength required. There's Kulimans. Cook. Archibald doing well for Scotland. So does Strachan. As soon as opens it out to Neri. There's Strachan. And Strachan is fouled off the ball there. Late challenge, but he's up on his feet and back in the action. Advantage given by the referee. The referee answering David Neri's question about the tackle on Strachan. Bet forward to Strachan, he's offside. Not at all happy with Jean Marie Faf, and that certainly is a catch weight <laughs> contest. Strachan and Faf, the Belgian goalkeeper, squaring up. Well, you have to admire the little man's courage, if not his sense, in that confrontation. Well, that's twice that uh, in the last couple of minutes, you know, that they've tried to play offside. And uh, really, the number, the number five back here was almost playing him on there. That's twice he's almost played them on. You know, it was very marginal. It's always a risky business playing offside. So the rain has gone off. Well, the wind is still blowing, and Mius. Now to Farkauta. Cook. That's for Farkauta. Neri watching it. Neri under a lot of pressure. And coping well. 
Very well indeed, in fact. Using Roy Aker inside to come clear. For Carlton looking unhappy. Dalvis surely was fouled from behind by Daphne. A late whistle from referee Garrido. But surely a correct one. Leash being crowded out by Darden and Cook. That's a good pass to Curlymans. Just behind Vandenberg, forcing him to turn back. And Garrett racing into space. He wasn't picked up. Archibald was a man who seemed to be caught out. Now Van der Elst. Van der's missing. That's towards for Cowton and the Belgians using width. The telling effect. But with the clearance to Strachan. A oh, great play from Strachan. Perhaps the man most feared by the Belgians before the match. Anders Missen coming back. Great attack on Archibald. Walter Muse. Again for Cowtern's found room on the left. And Strachan again in with a tackle this time and the pass to Dalgleish. This is Sunis. Bet is in space on the left. But Dalgleish making the run and having to go into that tough tackle with Van der Smissen. Gerets. Back here to Verkauter. Inside to Van der Smissen. Bet is blocking his path forward. Now Cook. Gerets is free in the right. But that's towards Vandenberg. And Hansen leaves it to Frank Gray to make the challenge. Van der Smissen, the chance to cross. Aiken to Strachan. Surely a foul, a tackle by Kuhlemans. The referee living, letting things go, leaving Strachan to come clear with the ball. He was lucky really to get away with that job because he turned back and turn back into trouble there, and he was surrounded by, by two Belgian players. But he's having a fine game, little Gordon. He's bubbling away here. He's full of running, full of ideas. As soon as his pass forward goes astray, and here's Kuhlemans again, causing trouble for Scotland. Supported by Van der Smissen from midfield. He's playing more in the centre of the field than in the first half. Gerets has Mius offering himself in the overlap on the right. Gerets doing it by himself, and Frank Gray stepping in. Uh, Garrett's a very purposeful, adventurous fullback for Belgium. Chase for Archibald with two Belgian defenders. Dalgleish picks it up. A little shimmy from Bet creates some space to work. It's asking a lot of Roy Aiken. Plenty of determination, but too many Belgian players there. And Scotland is a little bit stripped at the back as Furcout on attacks Neri. The early cross this time. And harmlessly behind for the goal kick. Furcout on explaining himself to his colleagues. Layoff from Archibald didn't quite reach Strachan. Aiken's header collected by Cook. Queuing up in midfield to take that. Van der's missing, got it. Played full by Furcouten and Aiken's headed away. Scott living just a little bit dangerously in midfield, leaving some gaps there for the Belgians to exploit. At least leaping for that. Now Bet. Now can Strachan make something of this? Here's Archibald. The turn pass finds Strachan. Van der Smissen doing well for Belgium and clearly fouled by Van der Strachan. Referee again allowing the advantage to keep play flowing. Mears, Curlyman's coming off his marker and Van der Elst is offside. They wouldn't have counted. But the problems being posed by Jan Curlyman's Ian really are considerable. 
Well, Kuliman's is playing in a very awkward position, you know. He's, he's playing sort of behind the two front players of, of Van der Berg and Van der Els. And he's moving around in that area, you know, and getting in, in spaces in between our midfield players. And he is causing a few problems. But the referee set that up really by allowing the game to go. And I think he's doing well in that respect. You know, he is allowing the game to go rather than just stop it all the time. I like to see that from referees. Strachan losing control for Cowton, steps in and Van der Elst is free at the right, the great chance for Belgium, Hansen trying to get across, and great goalkeeping from Jim Leighton. That was a crucial save for Scotland. Applause all round the stadium, and mainly for the Scotland goalkeeper Jim Leighton, although Francois Van der Elst appeared to do most things right, for Cowton made the pass. Look at the space for Van der Elst, the angle was right for Leighton, he kept his eye on the ball, and Scotland survived. for Carlton. Now Cook, and that little break for Belgium developed from a mistake in the Scottish midfield. They lost possession casually, and that was something they didn't do too often in the first half. Cook in for Carlton, one twoing past Sunis and Dalglish displaying all his qualities. Now that is a strange decision. Free kick given against Ken Dalglish. You can't quite believe it. Well, it didn't appear to be a foul to me, Ian. It didn't appear to be a foul to me either, but uh, he did go in a bit strong and he came in slightly from the back. But the referee's had a good game, you know, and he's, he's not made many mistakes. Very experienced official, 50 years old, his 58th international tonight. And it may well indeed be one of his last because I think he'll be forced to come off the list now that he's passed the 50 mark. Strachan now out to bet. Scotland not being seen in an attacking role in the second half so far with just over 10 minutes gone. But it's all about consolidation now. A 2-2 final result would be most satisfactory. That's carrying through to Strachan. Cook is with him. Strachan burrowing his way past. Pulling it back and there's no taker. Both Dalglish and Archibald at the near post. And that really would have been a gift for any attacker coming in at the far side. Great play from Strachan. It was terrific play from Gordon Strachan. And really, you know, Frankie Gray was a man on the far side who should have come up. Because Jim Bett had come over, had been involved in the move. And he found himself on the right-hand side. But Frankie Gray was 30 yards from goals, just watching the, the whole thing building up. He should have been in there. So the ball's behind for a throw to Belgium. Jos Darden, forward to Mius. Steve Hartsville cutting off the route to the goalkeeper, Guy Tice. Walking towards the track to see the damage to Frank Verkouten, who's on the deck. And I wonder if that may be diplomatic to give some change to the tactics for Belgium. He's off the field though, Verkouten, for the moment, so Belgium are reduced to 10 men. Can't recall any incident in which he sustained an injury. How can Scotland cash in? Sunis, near the inside. Took up good position in the United man. Now bet. Sunis. Have Cowton signaling out your picture to come back on the field. <coughs> the ball forward, inviting a chase from Graham Sunis, but they won't catch it, and it'll be a goal kick to Belgium. There's Fer Cowton. He wants back on the field. The referee sees him. And not much trace of a limp there as he goes back on. Guitais has a remarkable record as a Belgian manager. The 16 straight wins in the Heisel Stadium. And that run at considerable risk right now. Especially if Kendall Gleish can <coughs> get a glimpse of goal again for Scotland. There's a careless ball. Now Dal Gleish, that glimpse we talked about. Bet going ahead, he's going offside. The run was slightly mistimed. Well, we must credit Jim Bett for being up in support of Dalglish so quickly, but his enthusiasm carrying him into the offside position. Yeah, well, it was uh, one of those debatable ones, wasn't it? He was just, if he was offside, he was just off and no more. But he's done well, Jim Bett. You know, when, when he sees an opportunity to go forward, he's made the run and he's helped the player with the ball. Cook to Van der Smissen. Gerrit trying to link up with his midfield players. Eric Gerrit 
inspiring figure coming forward normally for Belgium, but hustled out of that by the combined efforts of Gray, Archibald and Sunis. And this is Jim Bett. Going forward in leisurely fashion. Strachan coming to help. Gray is inside. Neri making a run. Graham is trying to find them. Each playing it back to Roy Aiken. Whistles around the stadium, but no complaints from the Scots. So a change may well be made now in the Belgian ranks. Subs warming up. Good play by Archibald. Showing a lot of strength to hold off Dardenne. Now Dalglish. Strachan. Bet. Turning to look for the support. Gets it from Gray. Well, that ball may be too long in the air for Gordon Strachan. And skidding off the wet surface behind for the goal kick. So the debate, I think, Ian, for the Scottish manager, Jockstein, may well be to consider whether or not he should be trying to push forward to exploit the excellent form of Ken Dalglish or whether he must hold what he has. Well, I think the, the lads are doing a terrific job at the moment. And they're always looking as if they might just catch the Belgians, you know, because... The home team have got to try and win the game, and while they're doing that, they've left themselves exposed a few times, and it's just a matter of, you know, again, cashing in on it. I think the way things are going at the moment is fine. Kuhlemans for Belgium. Van der Smissen to Meuse. Meuse striding forward. The turn pass from Vandenberg is intercepted by Aiken, who's had a fine match in the heart of the Scottish defence. Strachan appeared to be caught in two minds and he's paid the penalty. He's lost possession. And this is Van der Smissen. Kerlemans popping up again, this time in right midfield. Flighting it in towards Vandenberg. McLeish is with him. Kerlemans robbed by Dalglish. Now Sunis. Strachan. Just nipping it back to Neri and making space for the return pass. Douglas making a run followed by Darden, allowing Neri to go forward. Cook is with him. Neri wants to retain possession at the corner flag, waiting for Douglas. Can Douglas get in the cross? Has he won the corner? No, oh, it came off Meus, but it's not behind. There's Neri. And Darden did well that time for Belgium. Forward pass from Farkouten to Van der Elst. This is Vandenberg, and this is where Belgium at the, at the most dangerous. Curlimans. Well, he checked out. He appeared to be going on a wide run. Checked back inside, and that enabled Frank Gray to tidy up for Scotland. Kuhlemans again showing his menace for Belgium. No Scottish player has been delegated the task of marking him exclusively. As soon as finding Strachan and going for the return. Dalglish this time not being allowed to turn. But challenge from back here. There's Kuhlemans again and lots of space for Belgium. This might be the man to tear Scotland apart. Van der Smissen to Van der Els. And Van der Els celebrates in typical fashion as Belgium take the lead for the first time in the match. Disconsolate to Blayton, but Scotland have paid the penalty for not picking up Jan Kerliman. It was his pass to Van der Smissen, the return catching out from Scottish central defence, and later again with no chance as Van der Elst makes it three. Well, Van der Elst has gone away from Alan Hansen too many times tonight, uh, for my reckoning. You know, I, I don't think Alan's a good marker. I don't think that's his game at all, and you can see that. Look at the space he's got there. Almost a penalty spot. They can't blame the goalkeeper there. Uh, I was talking funnily enough to Johnny Lyle coming over to the game tonight, and he was telling me that Van der Elst is probably one of the best players in the game going through in a goalkeeper in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And we've seen that tonight, although Jim Layton did make a great save earlier on from him. But two goals, it's shown that the West Ham player is, is back to his best. And Rene Verheyen is on a substitute for Belgium, replacing Frank Verkouten. Verheyen getting his 21st cap. He plays for Lokeren, the club from which Rangers obtained Jim Bett. Here's for Cowton, a tracksuit. And now, for the first time in the match, Scotland have to come from behind. 
that goal coming in the 18th minute of the second half. And I wonder if it may prompt some activity on the Scottish bench. Hansen. Bet. That's Strachan. That's for Dalglish, and the flag is up for offside. Wasn't a lot in that. Dalglish's frustration is clear. So Van der Elst, the benefactor as Curriman's destroys the Scottish defence in the second half, as he did in the first for the equaliser, also scored by Francoise Van der Elst. Van der Elst can't reach it. Now, might this result in a change in tactics, Ian, for Scotland? Well, I don't... It looks to me as if uh, Jock's sitting down there not really going to do anything about it. There's no substitutes, for instance, uh, warming up. So, at this particular stage, I think he's just going to have it, see how it goes for the next five or ten minutes. There are still 25 minutes of the match left. Difficult ball for Archibald to take. And the wind as the ball dropped awkwardly. Steve Archibald has seen much less of the ball in the second half than he did in the first. <laughs> See the ball hanging in the wind this time. Well controlled by Van der Smissen. That's to Verheyen. He's trying to pick out Strachan with a first time pass, and the substitute was in the way. Ryan has stepped straight into Farkautern's role on the left side of midfield. Archibald's managed to turn back here, but the cover from Mayus is good enough for Belgium. And Douglas making Faf move a little more smartly. Darden, only his fourth cap tonight. Backer getting his 13th. Here's Curlimans. There's a completely free roll on the Belgian setup. He can go wherever he thinks it may hurt the opposition most. And he's done that to telling effect tonight against Scotland. He's only 25 years old, but getting his 36th cap, and he made his debut as a teenager. Well, Strachan will battle to the end, that's for sure. This is Cook. Aiken, chase for Dalglish with Darden. There's no support at the moment for Dalglish. He'll have to hold it up. Bet. Frank Gray's on the left. Bet to Dalglish. <laughs> and this time the tackle was swift enough from Bakke. And now Van der Elst trying to use his pace on Hansen. And once again, Kuhlemans has all the room in the world. Here's Kurt with the left foot. Great save again from it. Well, the power shooting of Ludo Cook had it come as a surprise to Scotland, but he had lots of space there. Created once more by the positioning of this man, Kuhlemans. Look at him in the space. He waits for Cook to arrive. Decoy run by Vandenberg. Look at the power in the shot and the goalkeeping of a very high standard. Now Dalglish. Well, the Belgian defence closing in mightily on Dalglish, and McLeish won't get away with that. Vandenberg goes down, and McLeish has to make the long run back, having conceded the free kick. I think the ascendancy very much now with the Belgian team, Jock. Uh, Scotland look to me as if they've lost that a little bit now, and it, it, it may be in Jock's team's uh, best interest now to think about putting a couple of players on, a couple of fresh legs. Maybe even up front, you know, so that they can they can get something going again. No sign of activity yet on the Scottish bench. They're sitting down in front of us here, and all five subs sitting happed up in their tracksuits. As Cullerman sets it up again for Belgium. Verheyen. Difficult ball for Leighton. Let's it go. And the turning and winning the corner kick off Jim Bet. No, the linesman. 
appear to change his mind there, and in any event, the referee is overruling him. Antonio Garrido says it's a corner, and that's the decision that matters. So Ander Elst makes his way into the goalmouth. Vandenberg marked by Hansen, number five. Taken by Ferhayen. Leighton's committed. Fouled on the air by Vandenberg. Well, the Scottish keeper has shown all his courage tonight. Certainly likes nothing in that department. They've been a little bit unlucky, I think, you know, with the piece, with the goals. Yeah, I think he's had a smashing game, Jim Leighton. I think he's, you know, maybe the second goal we thought he could maybe have got it. But other than that, he's had a, a really superb game. Made some fine saves. And that was a good piece of play from Archibald, finding Bet on the left. Bet looking a little bit upset with the tackle from Van der Smissen. Now Scott another free kick on the left. Still not pushing the central defenders forward, although David Neri is waving McLeish into the box. Here's Dalgleish. Back is the marker. Pulled it back from the line. Mayus is first to it. Uh, Dalgleish fighting with Bakke. Referee gives the free kick once more. So the pressure goes off the Belgian defence for the moment. Dalgleish, the scorer of both Scotland's goals. The last Scottish international player to score two goals in this stadium was a certain Ian St. John 20 years ago in a World Cup playoff against Czechoslovakia. Well, Much is. too modest to admit it. It's never as long ago as that. It was a joke, 20 years. <laughs> it seems longer. <laughs> yeah. Kuhlmans again. But high end battling for Belgium. He's penalised goal for a spot of handball. The ball seemed to play him. He's a bit unlucky, I think, the Belgian substitute, but Scotland have the free kick. So still Belgium three, Scotland two. The Belgians coming from behind twice to take the lead. Here's Strachan now for Scotland. Oh, he's pulled down by Meus, and the referee he looked as though he was allowing advantage for the moment. But now he's pulled play back. Meus with a very cynical foul on little Gordon Strachan, who was taking on the offside trap when he went down. Meus, the former school teacher, teaching a lesson of a very different variety tonight. There's Strachan on the deck. The referee now allowing Hugh Allen to come on and administer some first aid. And Paul Sturrock starts to warm up on the track below us. Well, it certainly was a cynical foul, all right, because the little man had, had cracked the offside. He'd played it beyond the players, and he was he was in the box. And Mayo's just carved them up. And the last man to score direct from a free kick for Scotland, as far as my memory serves me, was John Robertson, and he, too, is on the bench, scoring against New Zealand in the World Cup from a position not at all dissimilar to this. Now, what does Scotland have for this? The wind will assist the free kick. They can get the shot beyond that five-man wall. Sunis and Strachan there, Frank Gray waiting for it. Set up for Gray. Never quite got the ball in stride, but the deflection gives Scotland the corner kick. And this time, the big men come forward. Verheyen goes back, there's Hansen. McLeish is there. Roy Aiken is also in the box. McLeish at the near post. Hansen hanging back, so is Roy Aiken. The near post ball for McLeish. And Douglas couldn't keep it in, protesting to the referee that the ball was still in play, but that is a goal kick to Belgium. Once again, the rain falling steadily in the Heisel Stadium, and Scotland have 17 minutes to retrieve the situation. The referee coming to speak to Jan Mari Pfaff, the Belgian goalkeeper, as he takes a lot of time over the goal kick. Bouncing away from Sunis, picked up by Vandenberg. Meus. Missed by Neri, but high and in behind him. A good pass inside. There's Vandenberg. The flag was up against Fran Francois van der Elst. 
Vandenberg looking for handball, but the flag had gone up before he let fly as Van der Elst raced into the offside position. McLeish challenging fiercely. Now Sunis lofting that towards Archibald. Did well to get the ball at all, never mind directed anywhere. Tackle is required from Neri, and it comes, and Doug Leash is onside. And he's fouled from behind by Darden. The Belgian defender was completely beaten by that. Great turn again from Doug Leash. I wonder if Doug Leash can make it a hat trick. And that would take him just one goal off Dennis Law's all time scoring record for Scotland. Doug Leash now with 28 for his country, and Archibald is clearly offside. The Belgian defence spotting the run of Archibald and walking out. And now the Scots have three men warming up from the subs bench below us. Tommy Burns is there, Paul Sturrock is there, John Wark is also stretching his muscles in front of us. We've got a couple of potential uh, goal scorers here. John Wark, whose scoring record is terrific with Scotland. He might just be the man to put on at this stage, you know, to get your goal. And Paul Sturrock, of course, uh, is a sharp little player. and. Uh, but it's asking a lot of the players with only 14 minutes left to come on and do something. But I hope when they do come on, I see Tommy Burns is getting his tracksuit off, so it looks as if Tommy may be getting a game. Looks as though it's Burns and Sturrock who'll come on for Scotland. Perhaps Jockstein deciding that Jim Bett has done enough running for one night. He certainly has done plenty up that left flank for Scotland. And the guile of Tommy Burns may be very welcome freshener for the Scottish side. It will be interesting to see if he takes off, uh, who takes off, if he does of any of the front players, whether he'll take off Archibald or Kenny Dalglish. Well, I think there may be a few Scots in the crowd who would be unhappy if Dalglish departed the scene. Although he's certainly looking a bit leg weary now after all his efforts in the first hour of the match. But it's all speculation for the moment, although that's about to be answered in one minute because Hugh Allen is selecting the numbered boards to indicate who's going to come off. It will be Burns and Sturrock coming on as soon as comes forward for Scotland. Archibald's taken up good position on the left. He's lost the Belgian defence for the moment. Back are going to meet him. Dalglish in the box. A high ball for Dalglish to challenge. Darden wins it. Breaks for Neri. Now Sunis. And Strachan has beaten the offside trap. But Faft is in trouble. Well, Faft did well to take up that position as his defence raced out and Strachan couldn't capitalise. Ten coming off is Jim Bett, seven is Gordon Strachan. Well, that's a very interesting decision. Strachan and Bett go off, Sturrock and Burns go on. And that means that Scotland are going to commit three men up front, I think with Burns on the left midfield. Here's Sturrock involved straight away, being tackled by Darden. Scotland's throw. So Scotland now going for broke up front with three out and out strikers. There's Jock Steen, this is 39th international as Scotland manager. That's a record for men in charge of the Scotland side. And an, an equalizing goal would make it a very happy night indeed for him. Scotland certainly have done an awful lot of things right tonight, but they trail by three goals to two, with just 12 minutes left. Starak to Sunis. Sunis is brought down, that's a penalty kick! Well by Kuhlmans, referee Garrido, no hesitation at all, and now we are facing the most crucial penalty kick for Scotland. And the remarkable thing is that John Robertson, who scored five penalties for Scotland's off the field. Let's see the quality of the decision here. Sturrock played it back in to Sunis. Sunis coming into the box, being followed there by Curlymans. And I think that's a clear cut penalty kick. Now, who will take it? Frank Gray has already scored one for Scotland. He's the only man in the field, I think, who scored an international penalty for Scotland. Jim Bett, too, has scored for the Rangers from the penalties, but he's off the field. But it's Frank Gray to face Jan Marifa. Whistling round the crowd, 
And this is a real test of nerve for Frank Gray of Leeds United. Faf on the line. Frank Gray goes back. Gray against Faf. Referee waiting until everyone's out of the box. Still not happy with the positioning of some of the players. Now Gray will take the kick. The save from Faf. And a third ejection of Frank Gray out of his Scottish colleagues. Let's take a look at it again. Now, did the goalkeeper move? Let's check on that. Well, there's not much doubt about it. He was away before the ball was struck, but it was still a great save. A shot from Sunis. Archibald challenging, cutting the wrath of the Belgian players. They appear to me to do nothing untoward. The ball appeared to be free. And spirits are high as Puff hits the deck. A yellow card for Steve Archibald, and that seems to me to be a decision which was dictated by the reaction of the Belgian players rather than the action of Steve Archibald. That's a load of nonsense, John, because the ball came away from the goalkeeper. It ran free. Archibald went in, and, and I don't think he even touched the goalkeeper. It was a fair challenge for the ball. And the goalkeeper's play acting here and uh, has got Archibald booked. And I must say that he, he took two steps before uh, Frankie Gray took the penalty kick. You know, and they're always on about uh, do goalkeepers move. He took actually two strides away from his goal line when the ball came in, so he, the referee should have made him take it again. And the referee, who was very fussy indeed before the penalty kick, now, was not bit, so fussy here. Watch it, just watch this and you'll see. He takes two strides. There's one, two. Look where he is. I mean, he's, he's a good yard off his line to narrow the angle. Goodness me, the referee's standing there watching it and doesn't let him take it again. Well, I suppose he showed a lot of courage to give a penalty kick against the home side in the European Championship match in the first place. And perhaps he was asking too much of his courage to order a retake. But... You must have some sympathy for Frankie Gray. Scotland now with just nine minutes to recover from that devastating blow. The penalty missed by Frank Gray, which would have given them equality. And the booking for Steve Archibald seemed to be very harsh indeed. Neus takes the free kick. The header from Hansen. Kuhlemans plays it forward. This is Van der Elst. A run from Van Heijen. And he can't reach it, giving Scotland the throw. But Leach has managed to turn his man again, that high in this time. And surely being impeded all the way back. Bit of carelessness too with the use of the studs, perhaps by Verheyen after Doug Leach went down. Sunis now playing it to Hansen. Moment of inspiration now required for Scotland. The Belgians appear to be happy with what they have at any rate. They're content to sit back and hold on to their 3-2 lead. And both Sturrock and Archibald are offside. Darden, the tall blonde figure, stealing a few yards. Darden's free kick. Hansen's under it. Aiken down to Sunis. Dalglish. Pass was much too firm from Sunis for Dalglish. Hansen's interception. Now Aiken. Well, not much doubt about that call by Cook. That was a rash moment. Recklessness by Roy Aiken. Correctly punished this time by the yellow card. Well, if Steve Archibald was unlucky, Roy Aiken certainly wasn't. No, I don't think he could complain about that one, John. <laughs> that was, he, he, was, he was frustrated because he'd lost the ball. He'd come out there, lost the ball to Cook, and then, of course, chased after him and had a little slash at him there. So, really, you know, he, he can't complain about that one. In fact, he may even consider himself lucky that it's Belgium we're playing in, not England, but he might well have oh, had yeah, a he might, penalty. Oh, uh, yeah, he might have had the early bath for that one in England. Little Cook recovers. It's Belgium's free kick, and the minutes tick away for Scotland. Just less than seven minutes left. Darden playing it forward. McLeish underneath it. Here's Aiken. Losing to Curlimans. Aiken is pushed into midfield now with McLeish and Hansen, the central defenders. Sturrock tackled by Gerritz. Advantage allowed, waved on as Tommy Burns takes possession for Scotland. 
Buttons playing it against Dardenne and winning the corner kick. Tommy Burns winning his fourth cap. Celebrates his 26th birthday tomorrow. An equaliser now would certainly make it a lot happier. Near post one for McLeish. Played in by Burns. As Archibald trying to tee it up for Neri. It was well read by Verheyen. Well, Hansen was still on side. But the pass was too far forward and Hansen has to make the long run back. It's very interesting that the linesman there, he doesn't stay up with the play, you know. I mean, he, when the Belgians all run out, he was, he was left about 20 yards adrift and it was the referee that gave the offside decision. Because the linesman, went, in his position, he couldn't tell. Obviously, he doesn't like a run, the linesman. So Belgium's free kick taken by Cook. Happy to knock it way into the Scottish half. Burns pushed by Van der Elst. Interesting change in tactics for Scotland. McLeish and Hansen, orthodox central defenders now, with Neri being given license to push forward on the right flank. Aikens in midfield, where he's won his previous five caps. Having played with some distinction in central defence for most of the match. Here's Verheyen. Hansen is well beaten by Kuhlemans. Sunes getting back. The loose ball falling for Verheyen. Here's Kuhlemans again. A slanted swerve pass intended for Van der El. Too late. Kuhlemans certainly has been the key man tonight for my money for Belgium. Starak is pulled down. I think it's Scotland's throw. Or has the referee given a free kick? Throw it is. Quickly taken. No, it's a free kick after all. Tommy Burns content to accept the throw. Four minutes left. Four minutes, 16 seconds to be precise. Here's Burns. I oh, thought Sturrock was ahead of him. The ball is out for a goal kick. And it's now Scotland against the clock. Hansen's header into space for Burns. Anders Smithson is with him. Burns adjusting quickly to the pace of the match for Scotland. Very difficult to come on so late. Here's Cook. one 2 past pass to Leach with Van der Elst. And then with Hansen, the flag is up against Van der Berg. Alarming moment though as Cook and Van der Elst played these wall passes past both Dalglish and Hansen. As soon as ball swerving out for a throw, no chance for Sturrock. And now Belgium will make their second substitution. Maurice de Schreiber's coming on. Another locker in player. And Vandenberg is coming off. And that means a defender in place of an attacker. Vandenberg greeted by Guy Tice, the Belgian manager, as he goes off. So quite clearly Belgium now happy to play out these remaining moments and hold on to the 3-2 lead. Two and a half minutes left. Aiken for Scotland. Belgium leading by three goals to two. This is Neri. Sturrock. Sunis has a bit of room. Out in the far side, Tommy Burns. Scott's waiting in the middle, Archibald, Dalglish. That's for Dalglish. Catching Burns on the wrong foot, uh, catching Dalglish on the wrong foot, the forward pass from Burns. Another Scottish attack, Peters out. Verheyen keeps the ball in. Plays a long one for Van der Elst. Soon as a little bit of a fan call, and here's Kuhlemans. Buzz of expectancy as he takes possession. Now Cook with Verheyen breaking on the left. Return ball from Van der Els carrying out for the throw. 90 seconds left. And time very much against the Scots. The 
these moments of slickness when they allowed Kuramans to set up goals two and three now appear to be crucial. Quite apart from the penalty missed by Frankie Gray, which could have tied it up at three apiece. Archibald challenging with Bath, Bath's in trouble. Goalkeeper came a long way when he had defenders under the ball. Here's McLeish. Forward to Archibald. Dalglish is behind Archibald. Now Archibald running into the box. Showing good close control. The cross coming against Bakke. And now Farhain on the break. Scotland are a bit stretched at the back. They've committed so many men forward. Kulaman's trying to punish that. Frankie Gray closing him down rapidly. And he's happy to come back, Kulaman's, to Nias. Seconds remaining only. In the last half minute, Van der Elst on the break with Hansen. Good interception by Alan Hansen. That long leg denying Van der Elst. Now McLeish to Sunis. Great pass to Barnes. And a good tackle from Gerritz. 90 minutes have come and gone now. Into time early on for stoppage. There have been a few. Free kick to Scotland on the far side. Can Scotland fashion a last minute dramatic equaliser? They All the odds against them. You can't blame the boys uh, in, in terms of uh, fighting spirit tonight. They've all battled. Every player has really battled for his country tonight. They've put a lot of effort into the game, Scotland, and really don't deserve to lose this game. Every Scotsman now going towards the box. Only soon as hanging back. Everybody in the box in the blue jersey. Archibald trying to get a touch. Back through to Hansen. There's Archibald. It's just put away by Bakke. And an offside decision was given in any event against Steve Archibald, and that may well be Scotland's last chance. We're now into injury time. We've had 30 seconds of that. The rain now beating down steadily on the Heisel Stadium. And the night which began so promisingly with Kenny Dalglish giving Scotland a one-goal lead, then a 2-1 lead. Now looking as though it'll end in sadness. There goes the final whistle. Belgium the winners by two goals to two. These two marvellous first half goals by Kenny Dalglish. Offset by two from Francois van der Elst. One from Erwin Vandenberg. And that great penalty save from Jan-Marie Pfaff from Frank Gray's late penalty kick. It's Belgium who take the points. Scotland go out. Certainly not disgraced. They worked very hard. Showed a lot of imagination. And may in fact be a shame and lucky to have lost tonight. So it's joy for the Belgian supporters, sadness for the cluster of Scots to our right. And with that sad scoreline, Belgium 3, Scotland 2, we hand you back to Glasgow. So that's the scoreline and Billy McNeil, we had a lot of hope at halftime. What happened in the second half?